Okay, quick realization I screwed up. I'm here uh, sitting on the August-September turn. And remember I had the Russians choose to go after Friedrich Strom with... Who knows if I pronounced it right, right? Uh, Friedrich Strom, I think. Uh, with two operational points. I don't think that's a good idea now looking back because I failed to build that depot I wanted to build. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take those two points back. I'm not going to commit to that whoops, uh, activity. Instead I'm going to operate without any campaign right now. Uh, so I get those two points in my general points but I'm going to spend one to build my depot, which I believe I can do. And that puts me in a position where I can move forward. Now, I could have built that depot as, say, part of a, a convoy situation, but it would still only give me one point to take the city, and I don't think I can do that. So I'm going to hold off. Maybe I can take it later in the year. We did get kind of an early start on things here. Uh, but maybe I can't. And without an operation in play, and I think I forgot to roll entirely. Uh, what we're going to do is also backtrack there to the additional ops points. And find it. Uh, oops, ops generation. I did not roll on that last turn. Uh, the Swedes are going to keep their defensive operation going because they need to move this back into Friedrichshamm. And they also, whoops, don't know what the Russians were going to do. That's kind of secretly determined. The campaign season isn't over. So the Swedes get too high a roll with a, a CP in progress that adds three, so they get an eight. They're way over. For the Muscovites, they actually have a better production role, and they do not have a CP in progress, but an 8 is too high for them as well, so they're not going to gain any additional CPs here either. Now, the Swedes might have been well off to declare their demonstration at this point. They may do it at the end of this turn. What this essentially means is the Russians are not going to move so the Swedes have a number of options, none of which are terribly good. They can't go take this without... Well, they can, but they won't get any prestige off of it. And that's kind of the point behind doing things. So they may actually hold off from moving this force. It's not really that much to their advantage to move it, whereas if they don't move it, they get to increase the quality of all their troops. So they can kind of sit here and drill. So I think that's what's going to happen. Now, what sparked this all off is I actually started the turn and I rolled a random event which gave the Swedes uh, some extra strength points, a couple extra strength points uh, from an extra draft or whatever. And they just took those in terms of, uh, it's not actually strength points, it's extra combat effectiveness. Their troops improved a little bit anyway. Uh, so now we'll move on, uh, trying to figure out what the initiative should be. The Swedes have the choice on initiative here. They can't do any, the Russians can't do anything, so we might as well leave them in initiative. It doesn't really make a difference, but I don't think anything's going to happen this turn uh, on this side. And over on the naval side, nothing is either because I didn't create any formations yet. So we'll just be kind of skipping ahead to the administrative stuff, uh, even though I'll be rolling wins and stuff just because, I don't know, I kind of like doing mechanical stuff. I know I gripe about it, but the truth is, hey, there's a certain pleasure. To hey, well, something happened with those wins. We got a Gale Force 3 here. Now, I actually rolled its movement. I know where it's going to go. It's going to go 1, 2, uh, actually, let's start here. 1, 2, three, four, into the central Baltic, where it's actually allowed to start. But before it does that, I'm near a port. I'm two spaces away. This is a strength three, uh, which is eight, nine, ten. Has a radius of two. I'm within two, so I have to check that. 
Uh, it only does one damage point, and there's a minus one for being an ordinary. Now, if I had launched ships from Stockholm at this point, had them fitting out or something, they'd be taking additional damage from that. When it moves here, it's now one away, but it's still safe there. Yeah, there's almost no chance. And then it slides away into here. But I just wanted to show that there is some slight possibility of a storm hitting something in port, I guess. It's hard to tell because I'm not really sure you can actually enter ports. In some cases, it seems to indicate you can. In others, it indicates they can't. I don't know. <laughs> so sometimes it might drift into a port. Sometimes it might not be allowed to just because of how I'm interpreting the rules. But there we go. Uh, it wasn't really able to do anything. Okay, to open things up, the Swedes chose to pull their event off. I haven't rolled for the additional operations points. I'll do that now. Um, they chose to pull their event, their uh, campaign off the board, their defensive campaign, so that they have a better chance at getting operations. They looked at what the Russians had, uh, their one point, and decided, well, if they didn't go for it last turn, they're not going to go now. Both armies, and I was mistaken, there's no range requirement here. As long as your armies stand still, they recover. So both armies have recovered significantly. The Swedes are almost up to full. They have one damaged unit. And the Russian army, you can see, well, they have a little bit more uh, trouble in place because they took some significant attrition uh, during their turn. Um, but now, and I rolled for Swedish reinforcements. Now what I'm rolling for is what? Operations points. Let's see if anybody gets any. This is a big deal. The Swedes actually probably want to start their operation soon. Uh, they probably should have committed themselves to it, but they're kind of hoping to catch the Russians in a defensive battle, win that and push them back, and, and then make the march on St. Petersburg. But it doesn't look like they're gonna get that. And they've gotta make a move quickly. They chose not to this turn. I made that a random choice. No Swedes. Russians are getting an ops point because they don't have a uh, command going on right now, which puts them up here, and they're in slightly better shape. Okay. Uh, that's about all that happened over here on the land. On the naval, I chose not to launch any ships. Uh, no convoy arrived for the for Moscow. Moscow did uh, draw another chit. They drew an escort chit. They had an option between that and another galley requiring chit to go sail somewhere. I don't remember. Yeah, this cruise the Allens. I don't know where the Allens are. It probably isn't a terribly hard uh, mission, but I have something I want to do with my galleys. I've got my support for the army with them, and the escort works very well if I can get a convoy up. But if I can't get a convoy up, uh, for support, that's going to actually hurt my, my situation. It might be worth, except it's so damn late in the year when this scenario starts, and when the war started in this case, it might be worth building a, uh, a depot on board a ship of, if I get a convoy so that I can um, actually, you know, advance more quickly than I would be able to by just building my depots by land. It's much easier to advance if you have the naval uh, supply source. But anyway, I chose not to build any new, uh, not the troop convoys, but any detachments take any missions for next turn. So next turn is going to be kind of quiet here. And in fact, let's make a roll for the Swedes. The Russians do not want to move yet, but the Swedes may. Odds I'll have them take it. No, they're gonna they're gonna delay another turn. So we're gonna move into a quarterly turn. A little bit more excitement happens on a quarterly turn. We'll pick that up. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I just boiled through the impulses in the September October turn. Now this is a quarterly turn, so some special things take effect, and that's why I wanted to do it. Nothing happened on either of the two boards, uh, mainly because I'm dragging my feet over. On both of them, really. I think we're going to see ships launching this time. And I think there's a good chance we're going to see a campaign underway. Because I've only got a couple more months before winter starts coming. I forgot to check for weather there. And I've got a pile of Russian cav units coming in. 
that I've got to allocate. And I'm not quite sure where they show up. I think they can show up with just about anyone. That'll strengthen the Russian position a little bit. But one thing I did want to point out in the special things, the ghost of Charles the Twelfth integration states that you use the same die roll for the two Reichstag tables. Well, that doesn't really work. Uh, the one over here on a 0 through 4, the hats are dominant. And that actually, this is a caps dominant position here. The hats dominant is over here. So, there's an effect to that. <laughs> uh, at least if I recall correctly, maybe I'm mistaken there. Let me look up those rules, but I think that they're actually reversed. Anyway, what I did was I counted backwards from here using that single die roll because they shouldn't be divergent. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That gives a five point span instead of a, and then, no matter what, they're, they're not gonna be exactly the same. So, uh, and then what I wanted to focus on though, because this is the first time we're going to do the negotiations table. Now here, we use the uh, summer scrawl table for this, and we've got hats dominant here. So that's what we're going to take. Now we do have to worry about where the military campaign is. And the military campaign right now is over here. That's going to give me a plus one to the table, which means that we're closer to peace because the Russians gained a little bit of, of space there. The Russians aren't going to settle uh, this war while they've been invaded. Not that that's a big deal to the players. The players aren't really interested in winning the war. We haven't had enough turns. I've got to kind of try to keep track of when the war started. I don't know quite when that is, but I'll fudge that as I go. And we certainly don't have that. None of these effects are in play yet. Those pretty much come from... Uh, well, those come from the negotiations table. Now, they don't really affect anything in the game. Uh, in Summer Scrawl, they affect your progress on the Lacey's campaign, but when you're using the integrated, the effects of the negotiations don't seem to do anything uh, to the campaign if I, unless I, I'm forgetting something. So I just roll a quick die on here with no modifiers. Four, it's talk stalled. Um, that increases the Russian demands, as it were, to, to progress under normal conditions. Now, here, there doesn't seem to be anything for that. Um, I'm going to throw the little marker there to help remind me that there's a plus one here, uh, just to see if that does have any potential effect on the combined game, but I don't think it does. All right, onward with the act. Okay, I was mistaken there. Um, the Reichstag table here... I rolled a four, that's going to be no effect. Uh, I'm not sure how to mark that. The faction table is something separate, which I forgot I didn't roll on. I thought they were the same thing. So my faction table is also going to be no effect. Uh, is there a Reichstag hats caps dominant? I don't remember there being one. For this side of things. It's a destroyed unit, yeah. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure uh, what the difference is here. So this one actually just affects the leaders on the board. And it's something completely separate from the Reichstag table, which affects reinforcements and operations points. Uh, they're rolled on completely different, which is just to indicate the factions, I guess, that are in the military, how they're kind of allocated towards this. And it's possible that they could get very far um, to having worse leadership and being cautious, uh, be, becoming timid uh, in terms of being willing to do anything. I've decided to spend my operations points. Uh, the Russians going for Friedrichstamm. They've got two they expended on that, and the Swedes are going for their demonstration with three. Basically, what that's saying is in these next three months, I'm expecting to get there. This is kind of a good result for the Russians, really, because if the Swedes go pursue their demonstration, they're going to perhaps walk around the Russians and let the Russians get their, what they desire. We'll see how this all works. Okay, now we're hitting 
Um, because it's a quarterly turn, our replacements for the turn, we have to see what we've lost. Now, this doesn't count the prisoners of war over here. They'll be coming in otherwise. But let's take a look at what we've got here. So the Russians have three units at B that they lost. They get 60% of that. Uh, And we round fractions down, that's 1.8. So they're getting one point of guys that could be a B. I'm going to add this up because I, I think I want to take things lower than B, right? Well, going up to B. And because the units that didn't move are going to get increased anyway. And I can actually pull those up right now. Boink, boink. I have no lost units. So basically, I'm going to get one point of units. So I can upgrade the last unit there. And all the Russian losses have been recuperated there. So I can get rid of their counters, even though they had lots of other things that they lost. They've recovered them in the course of their turn. Now, let's look at the Swedes. They also get automatic recuperation. So their army, because they didn't move this turn either, their army is pretty much up to snuff at this point, so I can ignore whatever they would have gained as well. And I'll take their markers off. We also had some increases in the number of uh, ops points that the Russians have. You can see they gained one. Uh, they can't add that to the campaign that they've just instituted. They would love to. But now they <laughs> had to uh, declare that campaign before they made that roll. Okay, now I started doing things and I pretty much did the Swedes' administrative actions. Um, they're actually forming a fleet. Uh, they have a mission that they want to use, this show of force mission. They don't want to draw another mission yet uh, because they don't have... Oh, I don't think I rolled for troops yet. So they may be forming a convoy. It's kind of hard to combine the two games in a lot of ways because you get a bump from one to the other. Um, but they did start forming a major fleet here. You got four different squadrons. They drew a commander. They got a decent one. I think he can command three squadrons. So, well, one of them will be out of combat no matter what. He put a couple of auxiliaries in there that allow him to search for and get combat. He's got that show of force expedition. So he just has to sail up into here. Now he's coming from Kronstadt and we got his piece on the board. He's just fitting out right now. That means he's got to, you know, work his way through the board, which could take some time and it's usually quicker not to go through the center of the, uh, the sea. It's quicker to go along the coasts as far as I can see, but it depends on the winds. It might be easier to go through the center so you can watch and see what is coming up there. Okay. So that's kind of where they're going. For the Russians, well, I ran into a hitch, which is I want to bring my Archangel forces into play. Now they're down here. They're, I've got a couple of ships in good shape. And the chart for that is over here. So I start an Archangel, and I roll, and I get a one. That's Cola two. Well, uh, everyone goes to Cola and remains there. If already there, they will remain there. Okay. Well, I guess these have moved down to here now. And that means, I guess, next turn, I can sail on the cola table, but here's the problem. Oh, I'll be rolling for the Baltic arrival turn, I guess. That's what it looks like. I don't know what the hell that means. <sighs> Let's look at this again. Okay, the Archangel, uh, the counters at Cola suffer one die's worth 
of damage points distributed evenly. Okay, but how do they get out of cola? If they arrive, they must immediately be issued RVOs, which is a uh, rendezvous. I can try to reach the Baltic. I use my own column. Snack. If I'm still damaged, I may want to repair there. I don't know. Anyway, that is completely not clear to me, but I have to roll some damage for these guys. They take two. I'll take that both on one ship on the uh, take that both on the ship the line because it's easier to repair that. Now that can't repair this turn, I'm guessing. Uh and I don't know what to do with this. I suppose I'll be sailing next spring or something to try to figure out some meaning to that chart. All right, well, I'll try to figure out what to do with the rest of my Russian turn for the ad. Okay, so a quick polish off of what happened. First of all, the Swedes got a reinforcement, which means they pull somebody out of the Sweden box. They don't have any requirement to keep anybody there because the peace index hasn't advanced yet. So they've got somebody in a minor convoy here who's going to be coming out. They also decided to arrange uh, a flotilla, which I mentioned. They got a, a fairly large fleet there. Got some repairs underway, so they got most of their stuff in place. For the Russians, they also made a decision to launch their galley flotilla. And they're doing this because, well, they have this support action that they want to undertake to get some prestige, but also to help their army, right, um, in its campaign. The Swedish one, well, does not, the Swedish little convoy doesn't have any kind of escort. Uh, I'm not sure if you can with miners. And I've only got this one. Neither of these fleet or flotillas or squadrons, detachments, whatever, uh, flotilla and detachment, which are both formations, squadrons are the Little chits that actually hold the sail on them, just to get the terminology right. But anyway, neither of them has any orders yet. You have to, by the order of play, you do the fitting out down here, and the orders were way up here. So I was waiting on getting ships that were ready. Now, they can set sail and start doing stuff to some extent but I have to look at the orders carefully because sometimes you can't do that. So like the show of force, I think that will allow me to, uh, to set sail before. So the requirement there is uh, I just have to move there and there's no specific requirement it seems to be uh, in play for that. And what about the support? I think that one also. I just have to move there. I don't have to actually start in a specific place. Some of them, like these cruises, I have to start in a location, sail to another location, and then back. So I, I, usually it'll be like you have to start in Kronstadt. So you can't really sail out and do anything. But as it is here, I can start on my mission before I actually uh, receive the orders, which is kind of cool. Um, elsewhere, let's see, the Russians got lucky and they got a support convoy roll. Took me a long time to find this. I had it hidden here under another counter, uh, under a number counter. I assigned an auxiliary to that. That doesn't get to sail out next turn necessarily either. Basically, at the end of each turn, uh, I think it's at the end of each turn. It may be each impulse. Um, it gets a roll to see if it can set sail. And if it can set sail, great. Then it'll uh, conduct its operation. So I basically have two different support operations going in uh, to support Friedrich Scham up here. Um, 
other than that, I think I'm done. This was an exciting quarterly turn. Now we're in October. And, well, we should begin to see the integration taking place a little bit more. Got to find the dice. Put them there to remind me where to start tomorrow morning. See if I can slip a little bit in before work. Everybody got randomly assigned admirals, not the uh, flotillas. They don't seem to have space for them, uh, the convoys, but the regular units. Um, I had to actually give a full admiral type position uh, to this detachment, even though it's only got a galley on it, uh, one galley squadron, because the Russians don't have any Commodores uh, unless they start losing leaders. The Swedes have a few Commodores, but as you can see, I dispatched a fairly large fleet. Now that fleet is going to be a problem for the Russians because their little uh, operations up here are going to be really in danger if that fleet catches them. And that fleet is heading their way. Uh, so, yeah, should be an interesting situation. All right.